Hey guys, it's been a while since I have made one of these videos and I have seen a lot of comments requesting me to make a top 15 heroes to solo rank up in season 18 and with so many heroes revamped since the latest update I also think it's about time I make another hero tier list video This list won't be in any particular order so just pick any hero that you are most comfortable with but one thing I would highly recommend is to at least master more than 3 of them in case you have to adjust to your team's composition Almost all the heroes including this list, I have made a tutorial for them before, so if you need any help playing any specific heroes, I will leave the links for those heroes in the description. By the way, in this video I won't be including heroes that are getting banned frequently, and heroes that are banned almost 100% of the time. Heroes such as Helcor, Khalid, Roger, Uranus, Esmeralda, Ling, Farsa, and so on. If you find this video useful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribing. That helps the channel tremendously, and I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks. So without any further ado, let's start with the list. Many players underestimate this cute little mage hero, but his damage output and sustain make him one of the best mage carry in the game. After the latest jungle item change, I will recommend to use Retribution so you can farm the jungle a lot faster and farm his core items as soon as possible. Once you have built him concentrate energy, he can pretty much become a one-man army. Just be very smart with your positioning and not get caught into a chain CC. After a revamp, I really consider Mia as a top tier marksman. Her passive allows her to deal an insane amount of damage in a very short time. Also her new second skill allow her to play a lot more aggressively in the early game and not just be a liability. Just remember to aim her second skill properly, right in the middle, so it will actually stun the target. Also save her ultimate for the right timing, either for surprising the target or if you know the enemies have a lot of crowd control and they will try to focus you first, then save it so you can escape from them. Saber also received a revamp, and now his single target damage is absolutely one of the best in the game. He can pretty much one shot any carry heroes in the game once he has farmed one or two core items. Also, his ultimate has such a long crowd control duration that your teammate will have no issue finishing off the target. Just be mindful about the timing of his ultimate, because it's kinda like a double edged sword. Once you have ulted the target, you also cannot move so you'll be in a vulnerable spot as well, so make sure to read the situation properly and wait for the right timing before engaging. I think many players are still underestimating the damage output of this incredible assassin. In case you didn't know, Moonton has been buffing Karina, and now her damage output is way more disgusting than before. If you do her combo properly, she can not only one-shot these squishy heroes, but also because of her passive that allows her skills to reset once you have killed a hero. Now you can kill multiple heroes in a very short period. And just like most assassins, timing is everything. You have to wait until the enemies are distracted with your frontline and then engage when they least expect it. I'm surprised people are not playing her that often. Freya is absolutely a beast when played properly. Not only can she deal an insane amount of AoE damage with just basic attacks, but also she can sustain a lot, making her an ideal hero for the hyper carry strategy. But this hero does require a lot of practice and good timing with the last phase of her first skill, but once you have mastered the combo of her first skill with Flicker, and then if needed her second skill, she can shred any hero in the game. Natalia is a very tricky hero in the game. Natalia players are usually either really good with her to the point they give headache and stress to the enemies, or they just completely suck with her. To play her extremely efficiently, you have to be able to anticipate the enemy's movement a lot and take advantage of any situation presented to you. Because not only is she great at killing a single target hero, but also great at split pushing as well. So it really comes down to the enemy's movement and how you should approach the game accordingly.
Lancelot is still a great assassin hero, but not as frequently picked anymore. He is really good at getting into the enemy's backline because he can use the minions and other enemy heroes as a stepping stone. And once he is in the backline, he can pretty much one shot many of the squishy heroes in the game. His damage burst is one of the best in the game, but in order to play this hero extremely well, you have to have some quick reaction and time his skill properly. A lot of times you can escape a very sticky situation if you can time his second skill properly. Don't let her cute appearance fool you, because she is one of the deadliest mage in the game. Even after the latest nerf she received, which in my opinion is almost like no nerf at all, she can deal an insane amount of damage to even the enemy's frontline from a very safe distance. And let's not forget about her insane movement speed and the amount of shield she gets thanks to her second skill, which makes her a very hard hero to kill if you know how to position properly during a teamfight. Esmeralda used to get banned almost every single game, but nowadays I rarely see her getting banned. Like maybe 1 out of 10 games I will see people banning her. I think that's because she received a huge nerf in the latest patch. But even after this huge nerf, she is still an incredible good mage that can sustain a lot and create complete chaos during a teamfight. She can constantly spam her skill if you manage to hit the target twice with her second skill. So always make sure to stay as close to the targets when you use her second skill. Yi Sun Shin is still one of the best marksmen in the game thanks to his incredible skill sets. His passive allows him to constantly deal a consistent amount of hard hitting basic attacks, but you need to practice quite a bit before being able to use his passive efficiently. Once you have mastered his passive, now you can pretty much spam his first skill. Also, his ultimate is one of the best global ultimate in the game. This not only deals a good amount of damage, but it also reveals the whole enemy team's positioning. Also, in a team fight, he can deal so much more damage because the enemies might be bunched together. Cecino is kinda like Esmeralda, in terms that he might get banned like 2 out of 10 games. But there's a good reason for that. If you have farmed a good amount of his passive stacks, just with one of his first skill, he can pretty much lower more than half of the HP of a squishy target, and in some cases, you can even one-shot them. And also, he's extremely good at making comeback, because the enemy will have a very hard time pushing. He can clear the minion wave extremely fast with his first skill. Just be smart on how you use his first skill, because you might end up running out of mana extremely fast if you don't manage his first skill usage. Yuzon is also not getting banned that often anymore, so when he's available, you should definitely use him because he's still one of the best fighters in the game. And he can definitely still carry a lot of games, just not as hardcore as before. Just make sure that when you use his ultimate, target the enemy's backline and then the main threats first. Also, it's important to know how to use his skills in the right sequence you can play him more efficiently. Johei is probably the fighter that deals the most damage to a single target in the early game. Probably Khalid is the only one that I can think of that can deal as much damage as him. But with this hero, you can completely dominate the enemy in the early game. Just remember to take advantage of his insane early damage and play as aggressively as possible. That's the main reason why you are using him in the first place. Cho is still such an incredible fighter that once he has farmed some of his core items, there's almost no hero in the game that can 1v1 him, and even when he's a little bit less farmed than the enemy, he can still easily dominate the target. Also, he's not the easiest hero to kill, so he's really good at split pushing as well. Ayabusa is such a great assassin hero for split pushing and farming, 
without the enemies being able to disrupt his farm. He can use all the minion wave and then go back to farming, either the jungle or another lane. And because he can clear the minion wave so fast, the enemies are forced to defend it, giving you all the time to keep farming. And if they don't defend it, then you can just simply keep pushing the lane. If you repeat this process, you'll be way ahead of the enemies in terms of farm. And that's it for the list. And remember, if you need a tutorial for any of these heroes, check the links in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thanks.